What is up guys, Nandy here. Today we'll be doing a bit of a how-to video for 21x9 gaming and ultra-wide content. Now, I'll just preface this by saying support for 21x9 is pretty good for the most part, uh, but for some titles you are going to have to be prepared to do a small amount of fiddling and tweaking to get things running smoothly. Because uh, at the end of the day, when you come home from work, you just want to sit down, play some games, and enjoy your ultra-wide, rather than spending half of your evening trolling through forums trying to find someone who knows how to fix your black bars and broken HUD. So I'll just quickly run you through some resources that I personally use when it comes to fixing my games, and then I'll show you some common problems that you'll encounter and how to get around them. There are really four main resources everyone with an ultra-wide or multi-monitor setup should be familiar with when it comes to fixing or diagnosing problems with their game. So firstly, we have the incredibly kind folks over at the Widescreen Gaming Forum, the program's flawless widescreen and widescreen fixer, and as a last resort, or for those people who prefer to do the tinkering themselves, the INI files. So we'll start off with the Widescreen Gaming Forum, as I think that should be your first port of call when things start acting up or if you just want to see if a game is supported in 21x9 before you actually buy it. So here we have the front page of the widescreen gaming forum. Uh, you can see the tabs at the top, basically standard homepage. Uh, but the most important thing, or the thing that most of you will be using, is the master games list. This is what's going to contain all of the information for the games that you want to play. So you can see on the left hand side they've got different categories, so widescreen gaming, ultra wide, and 4K, so you can kind of see they've got little medals and stuff like that that correspond to how well a game performs uh, on a format. So say for example we want Mass Effect 3, so look up Mass Effect 3, I've already searched it there, click apply, and we can select it here. So you can see we get a summary of the game, support summary, game information, comparison screenshots, solution and issues. So you can see this is actually a really thorough and in-depth website that really has everything that you need to find out whether or not a game's working and what kind of solutions will be available for certain problems that you'll encounter. So in our case, I'm using a 3440 by 1440 21 by 9 monitor. So you can see that under the ultra widescreen specific solution and issues, we actually have a widescreen fixer and flawless widescreen plugin, um, which is what I'll be showing you later on in this video. So that's basically how you use the widescreen gaming forum. You just go into the, the database, search the game, find out everything you need. Apart from that, you can go through and check through the forums. The community is absolutely awesome. Everyone at the end of the day just wants to play games. They want to make the games compatible. So it's a really friendly and helpful bunch. So do check it out and go from there. After you've checked out the widescreen gaming forum, the second most important resource, and well, really the most important resource you have, is Flawless Widescreen. And I can honestly say this program has saved me so much blood and tears when it comes to getting games to work. This guy is an absolute legend. And if you are rocking a widescreen display and use the software, please consider donating to this guy. He's made the software so easy to use, and it really is just like plug and play. Um, so if we just open it up, we can see here that we've got a bigger list of plugins. Uh, these are all the supported games that the widescreen uh, fixer will actually fix. So I've only ever used it for 21 by 9 gaming on a single monitor, uh, but it apparently works very well with multi-monitor as well. So when you want to play a game and it's not working, you should open Flawless Widescreen first, see if it's got a pl uh, plugin. Uh, you can then select the plugin that you want to install. Uh, in our case, it's the Mass Effect 3 plugin, and, it, and click on it and it'll download for you. Um, it will do all the updates and loads automatically without you having to actually install anything. So as I said before, this program is boss. Um, once the programs are all loaded, you, all you have to do is click on the game, load the game as normal with flawless widescreen open, and it, it'll just work. For almost everything I've tried, that's all you have to do. It's that easy. So while flawless widescreen is open, I'll just give you a quick demonstration of what the game is like before flawless widescreen works and after flawless widescreen works. So we'll start off with Ori in the Blind Forest, which is, to be honest, one of my favorite games, just purely because of how pretty and gorgeous it does look. So you can see that we've got black bars on both the left and right hand side of the screen. So this is what's gonna happen if the game doesn't support 21 by nine, it'll actually default to a 16 by nine setup straight off the bat. So this is the fix not enabled. When we do move to the fix, you can see that it fills the entirety of the screen and there's nothing wrong with the image whatsoever. The menu is still nice and centered. There's no weird scaling with the HUD. It just works. And that really is how easy it is to use flawless widescreen. It's plug and play. It is beautiful. 
The next example I want to show you is using Game of Thrones. Now we can see from the plugin list that Game of Thrones isn't actually part of the plugins. However, because Game of Thrones uses the same engine as as The Wolf Among Us, which I recommend you play because that is also amazing, and The Walking Dead, it actually does work with Game of Thrones as well. So if you initiate either The Wolf Among Us or The Walking Dead plugin, it will work for Game of Thrones. So for the gameplay that we can see at the moment, we're seeing that we're getting the same issue with black bars on either side. Now, there are no plugins, so we have to use The Walking Dead or The Wolf Among Us, and now once that's enabled, it works perfectly. So we do get some extra content on the sides of the game during the introduction and some of the cutscenes. However, when we're in game, it works as it normally would in a native resolution. So there's no, again, weird scaling. The game is just formatted exactly as you would expect it would. I'm a big fan of the Telltale games, by the way. So if you haven't checked them out already, please do. They are amazing. The last game that I have to show you, and that's this is another one of the most weird issues that I've encountered, is that when we load up the game, there are some big issues with the on-screen menu and heads-up display. So we can see here that there's clipping both on the top and the bottom of the game, which while that would normally be okay, just kind of mildly frustrating, it actually cuts out some of the game's menus and buttons during dialogue and normal menu interactions. So say for example, we're going into the Normandy, you can't actually get to the top and bottom elevator simply because the buttons are not visible on the screen. So it is a game breaking thing. So again, this is the fix disabled. We'll now switch to the fix version. So with the fix version, that even though with, when the fix wasn't enabled, the game was still running in 3440 by 1440 in terms of its actual gameplay. But with the fix enabled, we can actually see the entirety of the menu and we have access to all of the dialogue and elevator buttons that normally wouldn't be shown. So this does require a little bit of extra tinkering, which I'll show you in flawless widescreen right now. So if you do encounter problems such as the heads up display or the main menu not actually scaling properly, you can go through to the settings here in configuration and you'll be able to find under display detection, you can actually manually override what flawless widescreen is actually doing. So just to quickly go through what each of these does, uh, the width and height obviously set the resolution of the um, of the game. The horizontal display count and vertical display count is just the number of monitors you have either horizontally or vertically. Uh, the HUD width. So with Mass Effect, I found that keeping the HUD width and height to 2560 by 1440 gave me the easiest and most appealing solution to getting the menu scaled properly. So that will actually just set the uh, width to 2560 and the height by 1440 so it fits nicely within the monitor and the HUD X and HUD Y options here actually set the uh, X and Y axes of where the menu is positioned so you might have to fiddle around depending on what game you're playing and what kind of aspects you've got going on within your on-screen display but you will be able to figure out something from that. Your third port of call is the widescreen game fixer. The reason this is third is because I found that flawless widescreen has actually solved every problem I've had apart from The Witcher 2, which for some reason just wouldn't want to run. It's also a little bit more finicky than flawless. You have to press a hotkey during the introduction sequence of a game in order for it to work. It's also a bit more temperamental, so your mileage may vary. Uh, Mass Effect 3, for instance, doesn't work with widescreen fixer, but does for flawless, and it's the opposite way around for The Witcher 2. So the list of games isn't that extensive, but it's a good alternative or last resort if something doesn't work with Flawless. So just to give you an idea of how widescreen fixer works, if you go into the settings, go into the settings here, you have your hotkey, which is default set to multiply. So when your game's running its introduction sequence, hit the multiply key on your keyboard and widescreen fixer will do its thing. Your last port of call, if none of the above work, or you just want to do it yourself, is to meddle with the INI files of the game. For those of you who don't know what an INI file is, it's essentially just a plain text configuration file. It was used way back when in the MS-DOS days to configure operating system and applications, and it stands for initialization. But all you need to know for now is it's a nice and forgiving way to meddle with your game settings. I had to do this for Fallout 4 when it was first released because there were no tools available at the time, and the game doesn't, and to this day still doesn't, support 21x9 format. To edit the INI files, you need to go into your documents folder of your OS drive and you'll find the INI files somewhere within the game directory that's already in there or within the My Games tab. The good thing about INI files are that if you do mess something up, you can always delete them and they'll be automatically generated the next time you start the game up. It just won't have any of your previous modifications. 
When I do this, however, I normally copy the INI file, rename the copy version, and then modify the original. That way, if something does go wrong, I have a backup. If we check out, say, Fallout 4, for example, you can see that it's not actually that scary. It's just a text document full of variable names and values, and you can change each of these as you please. But it is best to do some research as to what you're actually changing. I know for Fallout 4, it has multiple INI files that you need to change in order to make your modifications stick. Normally, it's not that complicated, but it's Bethesda, so I guess it's just expected. So you can see that within the Fallout 4 prefs.ini, we can change the default field of view for first and third person, the resolution size, depth of field, lens flare, and well, basically everything here. And that wraps up the how-to guide for ultra-wide gaming. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and please give a thumbs up or thumbs down if you liked or disliked the video. Leave a comment if you've got any feedback or questions, and subscribe if you're keen to see any more of this kind of content in the future. Cheers, guys. See you in the next one.